Aloha and welcome to the Ruderman Roundtable. We have an every other week program here on Think Tech Hawaii where we talk about good government issues and environmental issues. And today our guest, I'm sorry, I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman from Puna and Kayu District on the Big Island. Our guest today is Stacy Aldrich, our state librarian. Thank Hello. you for joining us. Oh, Stacey. thank you so much for having me. Stacy has more than 20 years of library experience and was named State Librarian of Hawaii in April of 2015. She served as Dep Deputy Secretary for the Office of Commonwealth Library in Pennsylvania and State Librarian of California after serving as Deputy State Librarian in California also. She has also worked in public and academic libraries and was named one of Library Journal's Movers and Shakers. She's an impassioned futurist who has worked as a senior associate at the Futuring Think Tank of Coates and Jarrett. She's also served on the board of the Association of Professional Futurists. Stacy earned both her Bachelor's of Arts in Russian Language and Literature degree and MLS from the University of Pittsburgh and is currently Vice President and President-elect of the Chief Officers of State Library Agencies. Wow, that's a lot of library activity there. <laughs> We're very happy to have you here. Thank you. As you know, Stacy, I'm a big fan of libraries, and you've been working with us to try to bring a new library to our community. Mm -hmm. well, how did you decide to enter the field of library and information sciences? Uh, well, I was a Russian language major, and I had been the assistant to the Slavic cataloger at the University of Pittsburgh, and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my language and uh, decided that uh, I wanted to go to the Library of Congress and be a cataloger at the Library of Congress um, in Slavic languages. And so I, I went into libraries. But I really, the more I got into thinking about libraries, what I think is so powerful is that a library is a place for anybody. Anybody can walk into a library and have access to information that helps them do, learn, or become whoever they want to be. And I think that's so powerful mm. in our democracy to have that. That's fantastic. That's one of the things that I like most <laughs> about libraries, too. And it is, it's such a, uh, it, it, the fact that it's open to everybody, it's such, a, it's such an e equalizer in a way. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Here in Hawaii, what are our libraries' strengths and weaknesses as we stand today? We have a lot of strengths. We have amazing staff who are really dedicated to each of their communities and they're providing all kinds of programming every day from Keiki to Kapuna. So we're doing story times, we're helping kids get ready for school, we're helping them with language, we're helping kids who um, are in school with homework and providing learning opportunities during the summer, summer reading programs. Uh, we have uh, access to technology, so people who don't have connectivity at home can come to the library and use our Wi-Fi with their own devices, or they can um, use our computers. Yeah, computers. So we have a lot of resources that are available. Um, I think some of our challenges are, uh, on the resource side, we'd like to do more, and we'd like to be open more hours, and we would like to have more resources that help support the communities, more maker spaces, more collections of things mm -hmm. that may not be books, because communities sh like to share all kinds of objects. So there are lots more things that we'd like to do for our communities, and I think if I look at weakness, it's just that we have a desire to do so much more, and we're mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to do that. This idea of having collections other than books and libraries, that's a little bit of a new idea, am I right? Or did I just miss something? It's been going on a long time? Or? Actually, it has been going a long yeah. time. If you uh, read a report from Melville Dewey from 1899 on the state of public libraries in the United States, um, he talked about all the different collections that libraries had, including uh, artwork that you could check out and take home really? and put in your ho home. Yeah. So libraries have been collecting those kinds of things for a long time, but I think the mental model of a library is just the book. Yes. Um, but there are all kinds of examples, like Berkeley has a tool library. There are libraries that have cake pans, so people who don't want, who probably will never make another Barbie birthday cake uh -huh. <laughs> for their kid, they buy it once. Now there's uh, places where people can share those and they won't have to um, purchase them. So uh, we're looking for what are those other collections that are important to our communities that would help people share resources. Now, in discussions in my community, I've heard requests for uh, tool libraries, as you mentioned, uh -huh. and seed libraries. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, are there libraries in the state of Hawaii that have some of these types of we collections? We do. We do have um, one or two libraries that have seed libraries in them. Uh -huh. And uh, you can find that on our website um, under Browse and Collections. We have seeds. Oh, I see. And if you click on that link, you'll find those oh, libraries. Which libraries mm -hmm. have? And no tool libraries yet. In, not yet, not but point. we'd love to build them, yeah. Good, wonderful. What new technologies have been brought to our library system uh, based on you know, the information age and digital? 
So my predecessors were really dedicated to building good infrastructure. So we have great um, bandwidth mm. um, to our libraries um, yes. that were part of the statewide network um, with the University of Hawaii and Department of Education. We have free Wi-Fi in all of our libraries. We also have apps that you can download to use our resources. So we have a, a Hawaii uh, State Library app to, that you can use as your library card. So if you download that app, you mm. put, input your library card number. You can use that when you go to the library, and it'll scan it oh, for you. You can also use that app to um, search for a book and then put it on hold. Um, and if you're at a bookstore and you don't really want to pay a lot for a book, you can scan the barcode on that book, and it will automatically search our catalog to see if we have it, and then you can put that book on hold and get it from the library. Okay. So <laughs> you can scan a code in a bookstore and then go to your library app and see if it's in the system. Uh-huh, yep. Uh-huh, fantastic. So um, we've, we're trying to navigate the physical and the virtual mm -hmm. um, better than mm -hmm. we, uh, and there are just so many different tools now. Uh, we have e-books, we have audio books that are downloadable. So we also have some on CD if you still like CDs. We also still have DVDs. Um, we're looking at what um, potential there is for downloadable uh, streaming video. Um, there's lots of services that are available, so hopefully we'll be able to subscribe to some of those to create more access. So what we're looking at is what kinds of resources do people want to share um, that make sure that everybody has access to the same resources. Now, what if someone's interested in e-books but doesn't have an e-book reader or an iPad? Is that a device that can be borrowed from the library or not at this time? Um, we currently don't have any devices that you can borrow, I see. Um, but uh, you can read them on a computer or on a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be something we could look at expanding in areas where people don't have as much access. What we're finding is a lot of people do have smartphones or tablets because the price is dropping so mm -hmm. so much. I see. So. Mm -hmm. you, know, you mentioned the free Wi-Fi. I just oh, free Wi-Fi. I just want to thank you for something you did for my community when we were um, after Hurricane Izell had. Uh, blocked most of our roads and knocked down most of our power and telephone lines. You agree to um, have the free Wi-Fi available outside the libraries, which was the only internet connection for many members of our community. There was, I think, one cell company was still working. The others were not. Phones were down. Internet was down. Electricity was down. And you provided a crucial information service in a time of emergency to my community. And I want to thank you because when, when we called to request it, I at first thought, no, they're not going to say yes to this. And you did say yes to it. And we appreciate it so much. You really helped our community in a time of distress. And that was my predecessor, Richard Burns, oh, okay. who did that. He's well, an amazing state librarian. Um, but we do see libraries as uh, um, uh, emergency location, mm -hmm. oh, especially yeah. for information. Yes. Uh, when we have connectivity and nobody else does, mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier. We also uh, had turned the Wi-Fi on for the fl uh, lava flow mm -hmm. um, in Pahoa. Yeah. It was on 24 hours a, a day as well to help people keep in touch and to keep connected. And um, we think that's very important. And if, if the infrastructure is there, and we're 50 libraries across six islands, we can help be a part of that crucial emergency structure. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here we are in the digital age. A lot of people have the computer at home, access to the internet, and some people might think, what's the point of a library today? I have all the information in the world at my fingertips. Now, I understand there's people who may not have a computer at home or may not have internet access at home, but, but for, the, for, for other folks, what's the relevance of a library today? It depends on who you are and, and what your needs are. And, and libraries are designed to, to be there for everyone. And so for people who are more digital, who might think, well, I don't need to go to the library, I don't have time, mm -hmm. uh, we have digital resources available. So you might have a Kindle, but it's really fast how much those Kindle books add up that you purchase. And then you never look at them again. And then you don't even have them to put oh, on your yeah. bookshelf. You can't even show off this oh, yeah, great collection that you have. Uh -huh. So um, you can use our, e you can borrow ebooks from us and, and save money mm -hmm. um, and, and join book clubs mm -hmm. and see what else other people are reading. Um, there's also, uh, f for a lot of people, the library isn't just a place for books. It's a community space. So we have meeting rooms that are available in many of our libraries. Mm -hmm. um, we have programs. So for uh, families and children, parents are bringing their kids in to get ready for school. They're coming to story times. So they're, they're learning basic vocabulary and how to use a book. And mm -hmm. um, they're getting some uh, support from the librarians and for families. Like th these are the tools that you can use to help 
uh, help your kids learn better to support you so you can support your kids being um, more educated. So the library is like a hub. It's not just a book. Mm -hmm. The library is a place where you can come and listen to music. It's a place where you could come and if you wanted to join a book club, you could join a book club. It's a place where you could listen to an author speak sometimes. Uh -huh. um, it's a, a place where you can watch a movie <laughs> with your family and, and your community. Um, a movie night where you get to get out and be with other people. Um, you mean you have movie nights in the library? Yeah, we do. We I do. Didn't know that. I yeah, I all across the that. all across the uh, state, libraries okay. are showing movies and families come out and they watch the movies together. So it's a it's a place of community and it's a place of gathering and connecting. And I feel like libraries are all about connecting people and information and each other, mm -hmm. and and that's the role that we play. And I think it's an it's an important role we play because where else in the community? you have that kind of access and those opportunities. So libraries really are continuously there for everyone in the community. You know, when you say it that way, I see that the, the library is perhaps more important than ever because as we all spend more time on our computers in our own little world, we lose connectivity with people exactly. and our communities. And exactly. So many people feel isolated in their homes these days. And mm -hmm. this, this is a little bit of an antidote for it if, if people are willing to use it and come and be part of the community, be part of community events, mm -hmm. and come be where other people are, where your neighbors are. I think there's also a role for us to be a place of public knowledge. So um, we're just starting to work with the Harwood Institute. And uh, our librarians are looking at, we have a few librarians across the state who are looking at uh, finding out what are the aspirations of our communities and then being a place where we have that knowledge so that the community leaders can come together and say well these are the issues these are the things that are important to people how do we solve them together mm -hmm. so again it's about creating connections and opportunities in the community and I think too um, what you're saying earlier about being one, wanting to be connected because we're so disconnected is absolutely true uh, when we did our focus groups in the mm -hmm. Pune region about yes. um, the libraries and what people wanted mm -hmm. one of the things that came across very clearly was people wanted more classes and more opportunities mm -hmm. to learn and to become educated about all kinds of topics not necessarily a community college not necessarily a college but a safe place that doesn't denote because some people haven't had good experiences with you know college or school yeah. but a library is a safe place for everybody where everybody can learn and be together and one of the things that I was very excited about is, is your, your openness to having available workshop spaces where people can do storytelling and teaching their neighbors or teaching people how to farm or garden or mm -hmm. knit or quilt whatever their particular skill is you can have that kind of information sharing. Exactly. Or, it's kind of like the People's University. It's uh -huh. a space okay. where everybody can come together and share and learn from each other. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, what a great vision. We're here with Stacy Aldrich, our Hawaii State Librarian, on the Ruderman Roundtable, and we'll be back in just a moment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Thank Tech Hawaii, Asia in Review. I am Johnson. Enjoy the host. Looking forward to see you next month, December 15, Thursday, 11, right here at this channel. Aloha. My name is Carl Campagna. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. We hope you join us every Wednesday at noon right here at Think Tech Hawaii as well as on OC16. Our show covers a range of important topics regarding education, our educational system, where we are, where we're going, where we need to go, and some of the important people that are working on that, from state legislators uh, to department heads uh, to teachers and students. We bring in everyone we possibly can to have a comprehensive conversation about the educational system here in Hawaii. So we hope you join us again every Wednesday at noon here on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. Welcome back. We're at the Ruderman Roundtable. I'm Senator Russell Ruderman from the Puna and Ka Ka'u District on the Big Island. We're here with Hawaii State Librarian Stacy Aldrich talking about libraries. Uh, one of the reasons that to me, Stacy, the library is relevant, we try to focus on good government and environmental issues. To me, library, libraries are included in that because the libraries give you access to all this information and they're a form of education 
and a form of a way for people to connect and find out stuff. And I think that education is, you know, the way to lift people up out of poverty and the way to get people involved. And in that regard, we requested a, uh, a, a Pune Regional Library, which y your library's division agreed was needed. And you've been uh, studying the situation, coming mm -hmm. over to get some public meetings and mm -hmm. gathering information. How's the, what's the status of the Pune Regional Library? Can you fill me in briefly on that? Um, so, uh, as you know, we've done focus groups. Uh, we did focus groups in uh, Pahoa and um, Mountain View and mm -hmm. Kao. Yeah. And um, we are working with Group 70, which yes. is our uh, planning group. And uh, we've been talking with the community about potential locations. And Group 70 is analyzing potential locations for a library. What we found in our um, uh, discussions with the uh, communities um, in the Pune region is that one library is not going to do well for that whole region. So we're going to work on building this first library and then look at how we can build another newer library for me uh, for another part of the of the Pune region so that we can meet the needs of everyone. Well, thank you. Yes, as your family came over, Pune is larger geographically than the whole island of Oahu, <laughs> and uh, so it's. Thank you for, for doing that, and we're very excited about it, and I think needless to say, we're, I'm very, very excited about that. Um, tell me, I understand we've been talking about bookmobiles a little bit. Is it one possible uh, part of the project on the Big Island? Is that true? I think we should definitely put that in as a, a part of the project. There are a lot of areas that do not have service, and it is a, it is a trip to mm -hmm. travel between our branches. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're looking at how do we increase um, increase connectivity um, for those communities that it is a longer a longer drive and so I think a bookmobile is something we definitely want to look into as a part of and would that be the first one in the state are there other bookmobiles in use um, now we used to have we have a new bookmobile in Maui the friends uh -huh. of the uh, Maui uh, Maui friends of the library just purchased they a new bookmobile it. it's yeah. amazing so we have a nice model um, to go by to bring to our other islands but I think um, Many years ago, there were there were cuts in the budget, and that was one of the services that, mm. unfortunately, um, we had to let go of. Mm -hmm. So now we're back and looking at how do we provide services, and do we need large buildings that need lots of care yeah. in every community, or are there new kinds of services that we can offer that meet the needs of the community, um, that provide them the services they want? If they mm -hmm. just want Wi-Fi and a place to pick up materials where they could order them, we could create small you know pickup stations. Uh, or having a bookmobile is lovely too because you can do outreach. You can go to senior ce senior mm -hmm. centers, to daycare centers, and and uh, interact and provide materials to those communities. Well, that's great. You know, in, in my area, we have some very distant, very rural, sparsely populated communities. And <laughs> yes, not all true. of them have, <laughs> have the ability to come to town very mm -hmm. often. I can imagine it being so valuable for let's say parents of young kids who live in very rural areas mm -hmm. to be able to maybe every couple of weeks get a new batch of books. I know we've been talking about all these things besides books, but you know, let's say you have a kid that likes to read, you need 10 or 20 new books every Absolutely. week or two, right? And this would be such a wonderful thing uh, for any community that gets, mm -hmm. that gets that. So we really appreciate you know, being open to helping us. Absolutely. Um, are there volunteer opportunities within the library system? Uh, yes, there are. Um, on our website, there's an opportunity um, under community to um, to look for volunteer opportunities with the friends of the library. Um, the they're always library. looking for volunteers. There's a large friends group mm -hmm. that oversees the whole uh, whole wide. library system, uh -huh. and then there are affiliates at most of the branches. So if you're interested, just talk with your local library uh, and see how to get connected with those local friends groups. Um, and then sometimes within the libraries, there are volunteer opportunities. So summer reading program, we're always looking for, for oh, volunteers really? uh -huh. to help. So depending on your branch, just stop by and say, I'd love to help. And we'd love to find a way to, to help you do that. So in some cases, it'll be getting involved with the Friends of the Library, but in other cases, it might be working directly in the library yeah, with the librarians. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. okay, wonderful. Tell me, how do you prioritize spending? Uh, like probably most agencies, you probably don't have all the money you wish you had, right? So how do you decide what you're going to spend on and what you're going to cut or what you're going to not be able to fund this year? 
How do you prioritize that? Well, we, we really look at how do we continue services as best as possible. And so what do we need in order to provide services? And one of the things that we hear most from people is they'd like to have more hours. So well, we look at the hours first. What is mm -hmm. it going to take to try to keep open as many hours as we can, if we can look at priorities? I really want the building spaces to be open. For many people, it's a safe space to study, to be with other people, to have access to technology that they don't have access to. Um, we want to make sure those spaces are open. So we look at that and say, well, how do we how do we keep those spaces open? It is a challenge on some of the islands when we don't have enough staff to keep our libraries open. We can't even move people around fast enough to keep them open. So we're trying to figure out how do we keep those libraries open. And then it's looking at our collections. How do we ensure that we have access to all the resources people need to have access to um, that help them keep informed, that entertain them, that ignite their imagination? Um, that help them with their career or job. Interesting. You mentioned earlier that you can come to the library and connect with book clubs. Do I did not know that. There are book clubs that are, like there's a, their local library will have a list of my local book clubs that I can join or how? Mm -hmm. If you go to our website and you click on read, it'll say join a book club and you can see a list of the libraries that currently have book clubs. So we have a few branches that uh, they have a weekly book club uh, that you can join and they have a book that you read and everybody gets together and reads together. And do they typically meet in the library? Uh-huh, yes. They do, huh? They do. Wonderful. So you've mentioned this website a few times. Let's yeah. talk about this website. <laughs> what, what's it called, first of all? Okay, so you can go to our website, libraryshawaii.org. Libraryshawaii, one word, dot org. Dot org. Okay. And um, it's, uh, it's a new site. We just brought it up a couple of weeks ago, mm. maybe a month or two. Um, and it's designed to help people really find our resources. So we have all kinds of learning opportunities. So uh, at the top of the page, there's a learn. If you click on learn, you can see that you could learn a language through Mango Languages. So just with your library card, you can learn 72 languages with Mango Languages. For and free. For free. For free. And that includes pirate. <laughs> so we all need a little that bit of pirate. Pirate the language. The pirate the language. The Beyond language. ARG, apparently, there's more. There's or, other words. <laughs> I'm working on Hawaiian right now. So um, you're learning Hawaiian through an app that's free through the state library. Exactly. I so think you can, that's wonderful. So you I'm can going use, to do that as soon as I get home. We're going to download that. That's fantastic. So you can use your device, or you yeah. can use your laptop, or you can use your computer. But the app is awesome because when you're traveling, you can keep learning your language. You don't have to stop. So from the library's website, I can download various apps. Yep. One of them is a language app called Mango. Okay. Mm -hmm. What other ones? Um, there's also Zinio, which is uh, access to magazines. So oh, okay. I love magazines, but magazines are expensive. Mm -hmm. um, we have Mental Certain Floss, words. Rolling Stone, Wired Magazine. All of those you can download to your device, and it's another okay. app that you would download um, through, through the site. So with Mango Languages, you actually use um, the Mango platform, and then they point you to where to download the Mango app. But you can download uh, ebooks too. So if you have a Kindle or a, a smartphone or a, a tablet of some sort, um, we have latest bestsellers available. Um, sometimes you have to wait. It's like it's just like uh, waiting in line uh, really? for a paper book. It's it's you because you have to of, wait for the digital the copyright. You, you would think you wouldn't stuff, have to, yeah. but it's you, because you have it's a certain number of copies. Exactly, I guess, the huh? publishers restrict. Uh -huh. We still have to buy copies. We spend an extra amount of money for them to circulate, and each publisher has a different rule about how many times something circulates or mm -hmm. how much they charge for an ebook. So um, you, put them, you can put them on hold, and then you get a little email message that says, now you can download. Um, I like to listen to audiobooks, mm -hmm. and so I download a lot of audiobooks to my device. Um, my favorite has been Unsinkable, uh, which is a, a biography by Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> She's an yeah. amazingly interesting person. Um, okay. But we have lots of biographies. Um, there's nonfiction. Oh, wait, audiobooks. Do we need a special app to, uh, to read them to? Just overdri the Overdrive app. Mm -hmm. Overdrive. Overdrive. Mm -hmm. okay. So Overdrive is our provider. So they provide ebooks and audiobooks. I see. So that's available. And that's once again, that's yep. an app from your yep. website. Mm -hmm. Overdrive. Gotcha. So we have a lot of digital resources that are available, and um, we also have a lot of um, a licensed collections. So. Many people think everything is on the internet. Well, there's a ton of, of resources that aren't available for free on the internet. Having access to full text um, newspapers and journals yeah. and research is not free. Yeah. And so the library pays to license these, we call them databases, um, to make sure that people have access to all those resources. So we have 92 databases that are available. And that includes, if you're trying to fix your car, uh, we have Chilton's manuals online. So you can oh, download all the all the things about your car that you're trying to fix um, through oh, the children. Yeah. 
it seems to me that most of us people in general don't even know five percent of what's well, what you have to offer is it true i, I, would, I, believe the only one no, I would believe it <laughs> so we need to let people know somehow huh we do obviously you're doing the best you can yes and, uh, yes we're talking as much i i will talk to total strangers mm -hmm. on airplanes i've convinced several people to download apps to and and find out things that they, they didn't know they had access to so um, I think it's exciting to know that the library is there to provide you with resources no matter where you are. So with your library card, even if you're on the mainland or you're traveling, all you'd have to do is go through the website or through your app and you can still have access to our amazing collections. That's fantastic. I mean, I guess we, we <laughs> need to find a way to let people know about it more. So Absolutely. That more people take advantage of it and when it comes time for funding, no one questions whether it's worth it or not, mm -hmm. right? I would love to help in that regard in any way Thank you. that you think a legislator yeah. can help. Um, what are the biggest challenges in your position and for the library system? Uh, briefly, because we're almost out of time. Yeah. <laughs> I think the one that you've mentioned, that many people don't know mm -hmm. what we do have. And we do have people who use the library all the time, mm -hmm. but they mostly use it just to check out books. Right. They don't realize all of the electronic resources. Right. So we really are hoping our new website helps people discover things that you couldn't discover before. And so, uh, website, we're talking to more people and trying to get out and talk to more organizations and even finding your favorite thing and just sharing it with one person. So if you go home and you use Mango Languages and you let all your friends know about Mango Languages, at least now you have more people who know about Mango Languages. So if you could just pick one thing that you love about using the library and share it with one person or two people, I think that would help spread the word too. Do it yourself, huh? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And I will be doing that. I'm going to check into Mango and Zinnia because I also love magazines. And it's one thing to buy a book, but a magazine, you're not going to keep it. So it's six bucks down the drain. So mm -hmm. I look forward to uh, reading some newspapers and magazines online, as well as learning a couple new languages free through our state public library system. We've been talking with Stacy Aldrich, our Hawaii state librarian. Here on the Ruderman Round, ta round Table, I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Mahalo.